lives. Most of the tipping points have been crossed. For many of us who have been in this field for a long time, it seems as if we are now entering a new era where we are talking about the coexistence of renewable energy with other forms of energy, what are called as conventional energy, and moving towards a future in which renewables will be the energy of choice. This is indeed an important time. We have reached a point where, for a variety of reasons, primarily technology, which is what this conference is about, for a variety of reasons, renewables have become the favored option as far as electricity generation is concerned. The total cost of generating, no, the cost of generating either wind or solar energy in India, and in many, many geographies around the world, is less than the cost of generating say, coal or gas power. Yet, given the fact that renewables are produced when the sun is shining and the wind is blowing, implies that today, and probably in the future, we will always need backup technologies that can provide us electricity as and when we need it. In this city, for example, this is the time of the year when the largest electricity load occurs. But in the past 24 hours, the maximum load was at 12.25 a.m. this morning. And that's because of the air conditioning that each one of us switches on as we go to sleep. This happens every day during these three months, irrespective of whether it's a weekday or a working day. So it's rather surprising that over the past six or seven years, we have moved into a situation where the peak, instead of occurring at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, is occurring at midnight. Clearly, there is no sun shining at midnight. In other words, we have to find a wire media, a supporting technology, or technologies that can help us move the low-cost solar energy at the time when it is produced to low-cost solar energy as it went we need it. Whether it is flexible coal power today or, flex or batteries tomorrow, these are technological challenges that we continue to face. This conference, therefore, becomes important. As we look through the conference, we note the number of papers that focus on financing, on energy storage and electric vehicles, which is, I believe, where now the challenge lies, as well as on rooftop solar and on waste to energy. All of this tells us that the challenges before us are enhancing performance on the one side and bringing down costs on the other side apart from the larger and longer term issue of ensuring that renewables get the priority in the grid application, which they will as the price today, the marginal price reduces, and tomorrow the total price reduces to less than that from other fossil fuels. It is also a great pleasure that we would be recognizing people who have made a huge difference in renewable energy in the years past. And I particularly want to congratulate the recipients of the Global Excellence Awards 2017, Dr. Martin Keller, Mr. Dolph Jilin, Dr. Lawrence Jones, Dr. Sita Raman, and Mr. Pranav Mehta, who each in their own way have helped bring renewable energy technologies to the center of the stage. I also want to thank the advisory committee for this conference and the organizing committee who have ensured that we put together a program and bring in speakers who, are, who represent the cutting edge of knowledge in the world. This means that we 
would have a stimulating uh, three days ahead. And I welcome each one of you to this conference. I want to end by again thanking the person behind all of this, recognizing Dr. Anil Garg, who has made this happen, and the Energy and Environment Foundation, chaired by Mr. Razdan, which provides the support for this conference. I welcome you all again. Thank you very much.